Town Council meeting of November 19th. If I could have everybody rise and do the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, At this time, I'd like to swear in the newly elected officials for the town council. If I could ask you to. Other uh, elected officials were sworn in earlier. Um, the next order is order number 1496. Is, six is act on the request for nominations and elections of a new town council chair. I open the floor. I'd like to make a nomination. Okay. I'd like to nominate Jessica for chair. Okay. Is second. there a second? Any other further nominations? There being none, all those in favor? Okay. Oh, so. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey. Yay. Yeah. Did you vote for yourself? I, I did. I okay. Did. <laughs> you can. My other. <laughs> Order number 1497 is act on the request for nominations and election of a new town council vice chair. I'd like to nominate Jean Marie Caterina. Second. All right. And any discussion? And any other nominations? I'd like to, to nominate Kate St. Clair, please. Thank you. And any seconds? And is there a second? Second. Thank you. Okay. 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 So you take the uh, vote for the first and then vote for the second. Okay, so um, at this point we'll be voting on the first nomination. So all those in favor? And all those opposed? So that's 4-3. Okay, and then you, still, you have to follow through with the motion. Okay, and, um, and any um, discussion? There's no discussion. Okay. And all those in favor for nomination 2? And again? Thank you. All right, let's vote. Might as well make it interesting. Roll, roll call. So, all right, roll call. And so I call the November 19th meeting to order, and we have those present, please. Councilor Donovan? Present. Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Katerina? Present. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Council Chair Holbrook. And I'm still here. <laughs> so at this time will be item number five, which is general public comment. Please come to the podium and state your name and address, and you have three minutes for comment. My name is Robert Hall. I'm 
Robert Rove, near 4 King Street, Scarborough. Um, last year, we had both the town council decided to take a vote together, decided to take a vote together, and here we are tonight, decided to take a vote together, and then decided to vote together, and vote together. And personally, as a resident of this town, it's got to change. I request that you guys break up the seating arrangement. You guys cannot be sitting all together here and voting together as a block all the time. And nor can you guys be sitting there all the time and voting as a block all the time. There's too much going on here that we don't know about. And I don't like it. And I'm only one. It's got to change. I really request but the chair consider breaking this up so that we have alternate groups, alternate people who think differently. <laughs> Michael Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Congratulations to the newly elected and re-elected Town Council and Board of Education members. Open public comments are usually complaints and gripes. I've done it myself. <clears throat> Various citizens and citizens groups around town can often appear as negative and against any change or progress. Let's change gears here for just a minute. I'd like to accentuate the positive and put forth a different and positive idea. <coughs> me. The June budget battle is six or seven months away. My guess is that forward-thinking executives, finance directors, and directors of business operations already have a rough framework upon which they will build. My second guess is that both the municipal and the education arms of the budget have a pretty good idea of their wants versus their needs. I would also bet that as the month passes, or the months pass, both groups will flesh out their frameworks and will reach a final product. Citizens are prohibited <coughs> speaking openly to the school board unless on a specific action item. The idea I wish to present, I believe, will never be an action item until the final board vote on the proposed budget. At that time, I would be too late to effect a change, so I must speak to the school board in this forum. I propose that the town council and the school board, or at least their finance committees, sit down together the first week of every month in an open to the public combined workshop. I'm proposing the workshop start with the idea that the town and the school budgets must meet the CPI for this area. The CPI, according to the Department of Labor, for this area as of September is 1.7%, and 1.68% is the average for this calendar year. This year's budget total plus 1.68% would be the total amount each arm of the total budget would have to spend. That is the amount the, ci the citizens would give you. It would then be up to you to decide how to spend it. If during negotiations the town were to cede money to the school or the school to the town, that would be great so long as the total does not exceed the CPI. The first session could be to present the needs versus wants list. Subsequent weeks could be spent in negotiations. There will be problems. There are labor contracts to consider. There are built-in pay raises to consider. There will be pushback as each group learns that some of their budget programs may be in jeopardy. That is why we have negotiations. It is said that a successful negotiation is one in which every party feels they gave up too much. That's a tough pill to swallow, but it's why we elected the council and the board to make the tough decisions. Prior to the election, 
Each candidate for the town council stated they would be willing to meet with the school board to discuss budgets in advance. Those are the candidates. I didn't mean the whole council. Each candidate for the school board stated they would be willing to meet with the town council to discuss budgets in advance. Each group blamed the other for an unwillingness to meet and honestly discuss the budget. The election's over. Time for talking is over. Time to walk the walk is now. Let's see some results. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Going, going, going. All right, we're going to close public comment. And item number six is minutes from the October 15th and November 5th regular meeting. Is there a motion? Move acceptance. Second. And any discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Be unanimous. <coughs> Adjustments to the agenda? No. Yeah. And items to be signed and treasurer's warrants we will yes. do, do along the meeting. There is no old business. We're moving on to new business, which is order number 14-98, which is to act on the request of the council chair's appointments for council standing committees. So if you bear with me for a moment, there are two, two pieces of paper that are going to come to you. Down that one. Oh, he has a phone. Oh. <laughs> I think I have mine, actually. Oh, and one more that goes um, to the other one, which is the worksheet. All right, tap those around quickly. <coughs> so, now that we have all our papers in front of us, so this request comes to you, um, this actually, um, I, I had a thought <coughs> after the election that I am possibly to be chair, seeing how I'm the last one standing from when I first started. And so at that point, I had started to think um, considerably as to um, a 2-4 problem, which is making sure that the committees, especially within the council, really fit to the strengths of the councilors. The other issue that I had thought of is a common problem coming into a new year is that there is a significant lag between when we form as a council and the committees get set and, and it creates this like two month gap between when the work can really start firing up. So. My thought was to, to spend a significant amount of time thinking of, you know, who, who really fits to what committee and plays to that counselor's strengths, and if we could do this within our first meeting so that we really hit the ground running and have an opportunity to fire right up with, like I suggested earlier tonight, finance committee and, and the chairs and whatnot can prospectively reach out to each other and start lining up meetings and working together. So what you have before you is what I believe to be um, appointments to our council committees um, to that, that really fit those personalities. So with that being said, and I need to read each one, correct? Yes. Um, for council standing committees, <coughs> I would move that Councilor Holbrook is chair of appointments, followed with St. Clair and Babine. For rules and policy committee, Councillor Donovan as chair, Councillor Katerina and Councillor Hayes. For fair hearing authority, Councillor Blaze as chair, Councillor St. Clair and Councillor Hayes. For finance committee, Councillor Babine as chair, Councillor Hayes, Councillor Donovan and myself as an alternate. For all ordinance committee, Councillor St. Clair as chair, Councillor Katerina, Councillor Blaze and myself, Councillor Holbrook as an alternate. And at this point, we need a second, correct? Second. All right, and discussion. All right. Yeah, I applaud your effort to get this moving rapidly because it certainly allows us to 
make more use of the council year mm. by uh, having these appointments in November. Second. <laughs> <laughs> and any other discussion? No? All right. Well, all those in favor? And it's unanimous. Um, I'm going to interrupt myself here for a minute because I forgot to mention. <laughs> the second piece of paper that you received this evening is the various liaison assignments that, that we have every year to the various committees, boards, regional committees. Um, so if you could, would you please spend some time between now and our next meeting to, to fill out the areas that, you know, just write your name in in the box to an area that might interest you. Um, do keep in mind as you do so what committees also correspond to your council assignments. So, for instance, if, if you have an interest in, um, if you are a member of finance committee, then you are likely to have an interest in <coughs> better interconnectivity as a school liaison, SEGCO, those sorts of activities. Uh, and again, if, if you're on, for instance, myself, my experience has been historic preservation and housing alliance often ties to ordinance and, and some of those. So think of that interconnectivity as you, as you sign for those, please. And with that. Just a piece of housekeeping. Did, did you expect to do these appointments the next, on, at the next meeting? Next meeting. Uh, um, there are, item number eight is non-action items, which we have none. So that will bring us to item number nine, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Um, so the new counselors won't have any liaison reports, <laughs> but um, but certainly we can kind of trudge, trudge ahead. Um, we'll start with you, Ed. Um, the only meeting that was held was held yesterday with the senior advisory board, and I was not present, but. Uh, Councillor Donovan was, and uh, I'll defer to Councillor Donovan to report that activity. And Councillor Sinclair? Uh, nope, I don't have anything to update. Um, Councillor Caterina? Yeah, um, a couple of things. Conservation Commission, um, we met and we were going to discuss the National Guard, but that uh, pulled off the table. Um, so they are working on their um, plans for what we would like to look at this year, and, the, and uh, the Conservation Commission is hopeful to be more actively involved or as actively involved as possible in things that come forward. Um, I'm also the um, elected representative to the Maine Municipal Association uh, Legislative Policy Committee for Scarborough, Buxton, and Gorham. Uh, we had a huge meeting. Um, and some of the initiatives that are coming forward from Maine Municipal are um, a bill <coughs> that requires that if the state wants charter schools, the state will pay for them under a separate line item. And um, my school board friends here are looking at me. <laughs> the teacher retirement go back to the state to be paid for, as it was uh, previously. Uh, we were not able to get the municipal vote on school budgets. Um, that's something to be discussed, possibly. Broadband expansion also was not picked up as a um, an initiative of the Maine Municipal Association, which I was disappointed to hear that. But um, we will continue to work on that as a town. Uh, working and that's the three ring binder and trying to uh, make sure that Scarborough is connected uh, in the best way to what's available to us. Um, as people are probably aware with this last election, there is great concern amongst municipal authorities that there it's going to be tough sledding for the next two years anyway and possibly four years. So we're going to have to make sure we are looking at everything carefully um, as far as making sure the continued tax shift onto property tax owners does not keep occurring. And uh, that's where I'm at. Councilor Donovan? Uh, in the last few weeks I've been uh, trying to do an analysis of uh, how the town could benefit 
from the uh, FOSH proposal to build an ice rink. I really wanted to understand how can we benefit for things that are unrelated to skating? Uh, because I think that the broader the uh, project, uh, the more value that it brings to the community, the more appropriate it is, in my view. Uh, and so one of the things that I've been interested in is understanding what is the scope of senior services in the town uh, and to try and figure out are the things associated with this uh, proposal for a hockey rink, a skating rink, uh, are there things uh, in it that would be non-skating benefits that uh, could benefit a senior? So I uh, worked with Ed. Uh, Ed could not be present, uh, so I pinched hit for him to uh, uh, meet with the uh, Senior Advisory Committee yesterday. And, uh, and I had been talking with uh, uh, Mark Maroon, uh, uh, part of the group, the FOSH group, about a desire to <coughs> have seniors in town have a better understanding of whether there are any opportunities here that are worthwhile so that they can make a more uh, intelligent decision on whether they think this thing is uh, beneficial to the community as a whole. So I really went to the meeting with the intention and, and the presentation I made was largely to inform them of what's being proposed and where those opportunities might exist for seniors to benefit from it. Uh, and it was a good discussion, uh, and I was glad that the FOSH people encouraged me to go ahead and do it. Uh, I made clear to the uh, people in the Senior Advisory Committee meeting that I wasn't advocating on behalf of FOSH, but what I wanted to do was to not miss any opportunity for seniors in the event that the project does go forward. We all know that the uh, fundraising effort is monumental, uh, and so uh, I make no prediction, no one makes any prediction on the outcome of that, but uh, if it were to come to pass, uh, I would want our community and our seniors to benefit from it to the greatest extent possible. That was my goal, and we had a very good discussion, and I, uh, I appreciated their hospitality, and I see Bud Hanson, longtime chair, former chair, uh, here in the audience, and uh, uh, he was an active participant, as were others, and it was a good discussion. All right, and that leaves me, which I didn't prepare for, so um, I'll have to catch the next meeting. Um, Town Manager's report. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick uh, notes. Um, I know Dan Bacon communicated out with Council. There's an upcoming PACS uh, Southern Subregion meeting, for really planning priorities for transportation in this part of uh, the PACS region. That is Monday the 24th, next Monday at 3.30 at Old Orchard Town Hall. I think Councilor Donovan already indicated his interest in going, and anyone else who might want to go, I think you'll you'll find it enlightening. Uh, also, there will be another Ice Arena Site uh, Evaluation Committee meeting this coming Friday morning. This is the group that I've tasked with uh, looking at options on the municipal campus where this Ice Arena could go, and they do have a site identified. They've got some further due diligence to do to work on. And we'll be in a position to report back to this council on, uh, at your next meeting on December 3rd. Uh, also, very quickly, uh, Chief Thurlow and myself attended a kickoff meeting for a regional fire and EMS study. The goal of this effort is, and this is through the Metro Coalition, so we're looking at kind of the greater Portland first spring communities, looking at current areas of collaboration for fire and EMS, and more importantly, further opportunities for collaboration. So. We're excited about having the right people all in the same room talking about uh, a really important matter to us uh, just in, in terms of service priority and also cost, frankly. On a lighter note, uh, the tree lighting ceremony will be back here in Municipal Park, uh, Memorial Park, on Saturday, December 6th at 5 p.m. Uh, this is uh, a tradition we've started in the last couple of years and would like to really um, have it take hold and, and be something that uh, the whole community looks forward to. It. So again, uh, Saturday, December 6th at 5 p.m. right behind us here at Memorial Park. And just lastly, I want to congratulate uh, 
Council Chair and Vice Chair and all the committee appointments. Uh, I look forward to working with all of you and, and I'll be reaching out in the next few days and weeks uh, and I very much appreciate getting started early. Uh, we literally are picking up a month in, in my estimation. So uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, for taking the initiative uh, and, and moving that matter forward. And I really would like to hope you'll have a receptive ear to the workshop idea that's been used with some great success, from my opinion, uh, over the course of the late summer and fall. Uh, I'd love to get into a routine of doing that on a at least monthly basis so we can we can look at um, and have an opportunity for informal discussion and really to vet issues before they land on your agenda and are, are ready for action. So uh, I, uh, again, congratulate you and look forward to a good, successful year. Thank you. All right, council member comments. We'll start, we'll start on this end. Councilor Baybine. Thank you. Um, as the uh, new chair of the Finance Committee, I just want to reach out to the fellow members on the council. Um, I believe the current um, or the past committee met on the third Tuesday of each month at 9 a.m. So if you could consider uh, for the ease of uh, our staff already having that in their calendar, um, get back to me about what would be the best time so I can communicate <coughs> with the manager and then I can also communicate with the school board's finance chair. And uh, this will be a rare moment and that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Donovan. Uh, I had one thing I wanted to speak to, but I'm uh, finishing my remarks on the uh, meeting with the Senior Advisory Committee. A couple of the specific things that we talked about was that there's going to be some uh, uh, meeting style space, sort of viewing space, heated space, uh, as, pro as the hockey rink is proposed now. And it sounded to me like it, one of the things that uh, seniors would benefit from in town is, is uh, opportunities to gather, gathering places, socialization, uh, play games, cards, that sort of thing. There's also space, it seems to me, that for uh, right now seniors have the high school gym from 6 a.m. to 7.45 for aerobic activities, lightweight lifting, that kind of thing. And a lot of people don't like to get up at 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning and, and start lifting weights. So uh, the opportunity for stationary bikes, that kind of thing, at a facility like this that's going to have a lot of time where this space, you know, not a lot of people show up for hockey practice uh, to view it. So there's going to be a lot of space available. So those, those sorts of opportunities in particular seem to me to be valuable. Uh, the other thing I wanted to speak to was I saw an article in the Press Herald uh, a week or so ago on uh, uh, enrollment for the uh, uh, national health insurance Plan. It began on Saturday, uh, got some press, uh, uh, and, the, and the article was helpful because uh, it noted that for people who have always said, I cannot afford this, uh, the article pointed out that for 90% of the people who apply, they are able to get some, uh, some uh, assistance. Uh, and so if you've uh, not applied for health insurance, because you think it's too expensive, then I think this article really pointed out that in Maine, those opportunities exist to get affordable health care. Uh, and I think that gives people a great deal of peace of mind when they have that. So I wanted to encourage people to think about that. Uh, they mentioned a, uh, uh, one of the organizations in the article that was helpful. I looked up their uh, uh, helpline number, and I'll give it. Uh, so that uh, people who will know how to contact them. And these people would be able to tell you how to do it uh, because a lot of times it's the inertia of not knowing how to do it and you go, well, this is difficult. So uh, uh, the number is 800-965-7476. Uh, and, of course, you avoid the penalty. There is a penalty for those who don't get it, so you avoid that too. So lots of reasons to think about that this uh, this year, enrollment started now and goes, I think, for the next several months. Thank you for that. Councillor Katerina? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to welcome uh, Councillor Babine, Councillor Hayes, and welcome back, Councillor St. Clair. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to working with all of you in the various capacities on the board. Uh, I know I've enjoyed my first year here. Uh, Councillor Hayes is nodding because <laughs> we had this discussion. Um, and, you know, having some fruitful discussions and 
We may not always agree, but we can certainly agree to disagree when we do and, and be fine with it. Um, I also uh, thank you for uh, electing me as vice chair of the uh, council. I hope to take a bit more active role. I know people think of it as a more ceremonial role. You're just here to fill in whatever, but uh, uh, Chair Person Holbrook and I have been talking about um, perhaps having a bit more active role in helping with me committees and whatever. So what, that will be um, evolving, I guess is the word that I, I want to talk about. I was also happy to hear um, Councilor Donovan and I know um, Councilor Blaze and the work with the seniors. Um, I also have some thoughts on things that we can be doing in town um, along those lines. So stay tuned for that. And uh, finally, just so everyone will know, I'm not wedded to my chair. I can move wherever. I don't care. As long as I'm sitting up here, I'm fine. All right? We'll pick That's numbers. it. <laughs> we'll pick numbers. We'll pick numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I want Tody's spot. <laughs> I know. I can't type. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor St. Clair. I'm good. Thank you, though. Councillor okay. Blaine? Uh, on November 9th, we had a tour of Benjamin Farm. Councillors uh -huh. Katarina, <coughs> Hayes, and myself uh, had a tour with uh, Rick Chenet from the Scarborough Land Trust. And I think we all agree it's one incredible piece of land. Mm -hmm. It's a lot wetter than <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> 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 It is a really, really nice piece of land. Mm -hmm. And once they get some trails set up through there, and the walking is a lot easier than the walking that we had to do. But, uh, <laughs> um, there's a lot of possibilities for that land. Yeah. A lot of possibilities. And it's a big, big tract of land. <coughs> That's a lot prettier than it is when you're driving by. I mean, mm -hmm. driving by is really nice and everything. But uh, getting back into the back section, across some of those fields, it's beautiful, and I'm really, really happy that that we voted to provide $2 million to the Scarborough Land Trust, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful benefit to the whole town. Yeah. So, that's it. Thank you. Mr. Hayes? And, 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 and I guess I just want to say thank you to everybody out there for supporting me. It feels an honor to be here, so I look forward to doing the work with, with the rest of the counselors and look forward to the year, so thank you. And me, and I'm going to be long-winded, so bear with me. Um, I do want to start off by saying welcome. Um, welcome to the council, Mr. Hayes, and welcome back, Mr. Babine. Um, and then I also have a loose end from the last meeting um, for Kate. It is customary. Customary, that came out wrong, but it's customary. Uh, that we do always present a reward, uh, award for your service for your time here on the council. So oh. this is for your last term, and congratulations. Thank you. That's really nice. Thank you. having you back. Thank so. you. So there's that. And then I would also um, just like to thank the other counselors. Um, thank or curse, I'm not sure, but thank you for making me chair. <laughs> and, and with that, um, it comes with a little bit of a speech. So, and I wrote it, imagine that. Um, I would like to humbly offer to my fellow counselors um, some, some of my values and, and just some of my guiding principles as a counselor that, I, that have served me since my time here and I expect to serve me through you know, this year as well. And it's my hope that as a council um, we can kind of agree and embrace those, those values and those guiding principles. So. Um, they are as follows, um, to promote a congenial atmosphere and work as a cohesive group, um, to have respect for one another, to be open-minded and achievement-oriented, to have thoughtful deliberations that are constructive and support each other in doing so, um, to be straightforward and to communicate, to aspire to obtain collective decisions and when all else fails, as Jean Marie said earlier, agree respectively, respectfully agree to disagree. Um, traditions are 
always highly respected, but they are not binding. Maintain a good sense of humor. <laughs> it's very vitally important. And um, a very, very coined Judy Roy term, the best for the most with the least. Mm -hmm. So um, again, those are just some of my core values, some of my principles, things I, I wrote back and reflect on, and, and I hope you know that's something we can embrace as a council this year. Um, to touch base on something Tom mentioned, um, it's my intention to, to continue with the good work that Richard started with the workshop concepts. I think that is a phenomenal platform, um, and we should be really utilizing that. So it's my intention that the first meeting of every month will be a workshop. Um, and as much as possible, th this, is, this time is, is kind of you know, a threefold thing that happens. We, we have the opportunity to discuss in a relaxed manner just amongst ourselves what our thoughts are, what our feelings are on a given subject. It allows us to introduce subjects and concepts and ideas and, and have them as a first run as just a discussion rather than on the council floor. So we have the opportunity to say, that's a great idea coming from Long Range Planning Committee. Or, you know what, that, 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 that idea needs a little more work and keep it in committee before it hits council floor. And the other thing that it uh, achieves is an opportunity for the citizens at large to hear an idea and a concept um, without it being already on the council floor. So uh, again, it's just been a great, great successful thing. Um, I look forward to maintaining that. Um, and again, um, with the exception of a handful of probably consensus items you know, for the first meeting of the month, and of course there's always going to be an emergency that, that you, you know, circumstance <coughs> timetables, we have to do a first reading. But it's my goal that most things come through a workshop before we take it up for our first reading. Um, so there's that. Um, I have thrown Jean Marie under the bus this evening. She will be our new timer. Thank you for, for doing that. And my, my last thing I just wanted to say is, um, although I do, and I do appreciate um, Jean Marie is, um, has stepped up and, and, and is willing to take on a role as vice chair, um, I, I do also want to point out um, one other p slight change this year. Um, since I have been here, it has been a council goal to improve communication. Mm -hmm. and, and that goal just kind of spins, and, and, and you know, not a whole lot has happened with that. Um, I have talked to Kate Sinclair, and again, I'm going to throw Kate under a <laughs> good at doing that now. Um, I have asked Kate to take a, a, a fairly significant role, which is why um, I did support Jean Marie. For, for the chair because I think this is a huge role and, and I greatly appreciate Sin, uh, Kate Sinclair um, willing to take this on, but bringing our communication from the 20th century into the 21st century. It, it, this day and age, we really need to be online. We need to have a Facebook presence so that we're communicating out. We, you know. That, that, you know, with, with your background and with your expertise, this is really a good good place for you to, to just open up doors for the council and improve the communication, not only with the public, but as well as just within ourselves, too. So, um, if you will, it's a new liaison role, I think, but um, I, I do just want to thank you for, for being willing to ta take that on and tackle that. So, um, Again, look for some exciting new, hopefully, avenues for, for getting communication out there and bringing it into our newer current technology. And with that, we have order number 1499, which is an act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I MSRA 405 in consultation with legal counsel relating to pending litigation and to adjourn meeting, and to adjourn from that meeting. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? 